Hey, 42 here. Are we alone in the universe? As big as big questions go, it's one of the biggest we've yet to know. The idea that other advanced civilizations might be out there somewhere, peering up at some of the same stars we do through their freaky eyes is incredibly intoxicating. But the truth is, finding other intelligent species remains a distant dream, quite literally. Imagine a million civilizations with human-level technology living right here in our very own galaxy, the Milky Way. That sounds like a lot, right? We'd be dodging ETs every time Elon Musk launched a rocket. But, as is often the case, the sheer enormity of outer space makes a mockery of human intuition. In reality, if there were a million civilizations evenly distributed throughout the Milky Way, our nearest neighbours wouldn't be hanging out just around the corner, but about 300 light years away. That's a distance so vast, we might never have the technology to blast, warp, or teleport across it. You guys know that I love history, and I especially love historically accurate war games, which is why I'm a huge fan of Warpath. In Warpath, you can do battle on the ground and in the air in iconic locations all around Europe to emerge victorious in this classic real-time strategy game. The maps in the game are based on the real world, and the PvE gameplay simulates famous historical battles. So, you can return to the battlefield and alter the course of history. Personally, I really like the social aspect of Warpath. You can develop your alliance and fight side by side with your brothers in arms. Fighting with your friends and alongside your alliance really makes you experience the camaraderie that brothers in arms have on the battlefield. Oh, and the new update 5.0 is coming out where you can use a sniper and play in first person point of view. Warpath has online tournaments for players and everyone can participate. New players will compete with game power and senior players can invite a friend and join as a team to compete with their total game power. The prize pool is up to $15,000 and everyone has the chance to win. Click the link in the description to play Warpath today. It's a great game and by using the special link in the description, it really helps out my channel. So don't miss out. And thanks to Warpath for sponsoring this video. As of today, the furthest man-made object from Earth is NASA's Voyager 1 probe, which left our home planet in 1977. In the four and a bit decades since, despite travelling at a fairly nippy 17 kilometers per second, Voyager 1 hasn't even made it a single light day from Earth, let alone a light year. So those alien neighbours I mentioned, the ones that live 300 light years away, yeah. It would take Voyager five and a half million years to pay them a visit. And that's just one tiny probe, not a monolithic colony ship capable of transporting the thousands of people necessary to prevent inbreeding mega death during a trip between the stars. What I'm trying to say is the universe is colossal. And whilst it's by no means out of the question that we might one day detect aliens out there amongst the stars, the chances of us actually crossing are pretty much nothing. Well, not unless they approach us first, and if that happens, we may end up wishing they hadn't. Luckily, to meet ourselves some aliens, we might not have to venture too far from our home star, because it turns out there's a decent chance they might already be living amongst us. Well, okay, not exactly amongst us, more like just down the road. And no, I'm not talking about the Facebook headquarters. You see, scientists are becoming increasingly optimistic that alien life might already exist in our solar system. Though, admittedly, these otherworldly life forms are unlikely to be anything other than simple microorganisms. If there was another advanced civilization just chilling out on Saturn, we'd probably have noticed it by now. Microscopic aliens might sound a little less exciting than, I don't know, the Borg, but finding a single alien microbe clinging bravely to the surface of a world other than our own would be one of the single biggest moments in human history. Not only that, it would fundamentally change our understanding of the entire universe. Let me explain. At the moment, 
we essentially have no idea whatsoever how common life is. Maybe we're entirely alone in the universe. Or we could just be one of quadrillions of different life forms, living on hundreds of trillions of different planets. That isn't hyperbole either. It genuinely is that wide open. Finding life elsewhere in our own solar system would dramatically and instantaneously change that picture. Because if life evolved independently twice in the very same solar system, it would be an incredibly strong indicator that life is rife. And that would be an absolute game changer. After all, it's starting to look like planets with habitable conditions are pretty common. According to a 2020 study, there might be as many as 300 million of them in our galaxy alone. In other words, finding life here in our own solar system, even simple life, would all but confirm that we have a lot of neighbors. So yeah, it's probably worth having a look. The only question is, where's the best place to start? To the uninformed observer, Venus might not seem like an obvious place to go looking for aliens. To be honest, even to an informed observer, things don't look all that promising. We're talking about a planet shrouded in clouds of concentrated sulfuric acid, with surface temperatures of about 500 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt lead. Oh, and any plucky alien visiting Venus would also be under a lot of pressure. Not from his petulant alien boss, but the kinds of pressure only found at 1,000 meters below sea level here on Earth. In other words, Venus is pretty much the dictionary definition of uninhabitable. It isn't, but you get the point. It's the kind of planet a Sith Lord might build a base on just to look like a badass in front of all his Sithy mates. But here's the thing, Venus hasn't always been a brutal hellscape. Not long ago, our neighbor planet may have been, well, a bit more neighborly, with a temperate climate and liquid water on its surface. Even better, according to a 2019 study by NASA, these positively pleasant conditions probably persisted for upwards of 3 billion years. That's more than enough time for life to, well, find a way. Of course, given the conditions found on Venus today, it's highly unlikely any life lingered for this long. Unless... Back in 2020, British scientists observing Venus's fiery atmosphere detected something they didn't expect to detect. Traces of a gas called phosphine. The find stunned the scientific world. And once they came to, they realized that on terrestrial planets like Earth and Venus, phosphine is only created through biological processes. In other words, if there's phosphine on Venus, that means there's life on Venus. But before you go and hang out your first contact bunting, I should probably mention that the whole phosphine on Venus thing is a little bit controversial, and several recent studies dispute the findings. Still, we can't yet refute that life once existed on Venus, and with no fewer than six missions due there in the next 10 years or so, who knows, we might just find it. If not Venus, maybe Mars is where we'll find our first, well, Martians. There's a whole bunch of evidence supporting the idea that liquid water once flowed on its surface in significant quantities. And thanks to NASA's Curiosity rover, we also know that organic compounds, examples of prebiotic chemistry, are found there too. Sadly, like Venus, the red planet isn't exactly a great holiday destination these days. Average surface temperatures hover at around minus 60 degrees Celsius, and the atmosphere is incredibly thin, with surface pressures about 1% of those found on Earth. Mars also lacks a magnetic field, meaning it gets absolutely blasted with ionizing radiation, which is lethal to life. That's the bad news. The good news is that if life has ever existed on Mars, there's a pretty decent chance we'll be able to find it. The planet isn't tectonically active, meaning the majority of its surface is more than 3.5 billion years old. In other words, it's one giant time capsule. 
Theoretically then, traces of ancient life lie tantalizingly tucked away in this big red treasure trove. As I say these words, NASA's Perseverance rover is trundling around the Martian surface, patiently bottling up rock samples for a return to Earth in the early 2030s, where they'll be examined by the best labs ever built by humans. If Mars was ever home to alien life, we have an excellent chance of proving it within the next decade or so. When we talk about the search for alien life, we tend to focus our attention on planets. I guess that's understandable. We have pretty strong confirmation bias. You're looking at it. But whilst Mars and Venus may have been habitable millions, even billions of years in the distant past, it turns out that some of our own solar system's more than 200 moons may still be habitable right now. For a long time, the most promising of which was Jupiter's moon, Europa. And whilst its claim to that title is perhaps flimsier than it used to be, mostly because of another fascinating moon I'll tell you about in just a minute, there's no denying that Europa has got an awful lot going for it. Because hidden beneath the moon's icy crust is a vast ocean. And I really do mean vast. According to our current best estimates, Europa's global ocean averages a staggering 100 kilometers deep. By comparison, Earth's oceans are on average just four kilometers deep. To put that another way, it's estimated to contain roughly twice as much water as can be found in all of Earth's oceans put together, despite being smaller than our own moon. Even better, scientists believe this ocean is in direct contact with Europa's rocky core allowing nutrients and other chemical goodness to dissolve into the water where they could be used by any alien microbes that happen to be living there. Surface temperatures on Europa can drop to minus 220 degrees Celsius. For context, the coldest temperatures ever recorded on Earth is about minus 90. But tidal forces generated by the never-ending gravitational tug of war between Jupiter and its many moons cause Europa to warp and flex, generating heat through friction. As of today, there are still plenty of unknowns. It's unclear exactly how warm Europa's subsurface ocean might actually be, and we don't know the pH or salinity of the water it contains, and we aren't really sure what chemistry can be found down there. Even so, there's every chance that this icy moon is habitable. The trouble is, even if the hidden world beneath Europa's frozen crust is positively brimming with alien life, actually finding it is going to be a monumentally difficult task. Europa lies at an average distance of about 630 million kilometers from Earth, significantly further than the likes of Venus or Mars. When NASA's flagship Europa Clipper mission blasts off for the Jupiter system in 2024, It'll be a good five and a half years before it actually gets there. And even when it does, it won't be looking for life. At least, not directly. Because if there really are aliens living on Europa, they're buried beneath up to 30 kilometers of ice that's so cold, it's harder than granite. That would be a serious engineering challenge to get through here on Earth. But on a frozen moon 630 million kilometers away, it's an obstacle we simply aren't equipped to overcome just yet. If Europa was the long-time poster child in the hunt for extraterrestrial life in our cosmic backyard, Enceladus, one of Saturn's frankly excessive 82 moons, is very much the pretender to the crown. Which is surprising, because on paper it doesn't actually look all that impressive. For one thing, it's absolutely bloody tiny. With a diameter of just 500 kilometers, you could comfortably plonk it down in between London and Edinburgh. And its gravity is so weak that if you stood on the surface of Enceladus and fired a gun directly upwards, the bullet would simply carry on into outer space. Thanks to this undeniable weediness, and the fact that Saturn is a good 10 times further away from the Sun than Earth, for a long time scientists assumed Enceladus would be nothing more than a tiny frozen blob with whatever heat it may once have held in its core, having long since dissipated. But that all changed in 2005, 
when NASA's Cassini probe did a flyby of Enceladus, and it observed something remarkable. Plumes of water being fired out into space from the Moon's southern pole. The find was so unexpected that Cassini's mission orders were changed immediately, with the probe taking a new direction to fly through this watery ejection. And what it found was salt water, compelling evidence that, much like Europa, Enceladus's barren icy crust hides a big wet secret, a subsurface ocean. Not only that, Cassini also detected simple organic compounds, potential building blocks of life. As an interesting aside, it turns out that little Enceladus has been pumping out so much water into space that it single-handedly created one of Saturn's rings, known as the E-ring. Scientists had spent decades wondering why it was that Enceladus appeared to be orbiting Saturn smack bang in the middle of this giant ring. And as soon as Cassini picked up those plumes, the mystery was solved. Anyway, towards the end of Cassini's mission, its instruments made one last important observation. Evidence of active hydrothermal vents bubbling away in the depths of Enceladus's subsurface ocean. That was a huge deal because many origin of life scientists believe it was around exactly these kinds of vents that inanimate matter first sprang into life right here on Earth billions of years ago. The evidence is still being pieced together, but there's a growing feeling that part of Enceladus's ocean might actually be habitable to complex life, and even some extremophile microorganisms found on Earth today. Which is why it's no exaggeration to say that right now, this tiny moon of Saturn is very probably the single most promising place in the entire solar system for us to go and bag ourselves some bona fide aliens. Of course, any attempt to go and do just that will face many of the same issues I talked about in the context of Europa. On average, Saturn is almost twice as far away from Earth as Jupiter is, so getting there is an absolute ball ache. And much like on Europa, if there is any life to find, kilometers of solid ice will need to be mined. Of course, there is one key difference here. Enceladus is helpfully blasting its water from its subterranean prison clean out into space meaning we won't need to drill through one of the solar system's biggest ice cubes to get our hands on some samples. But sadly, with zero missions planned for Enceladus, we aren't likely to find out anytime soon if there is life within this tiny moon. Enceladus may be the most likely place to find life in our backyard, but for my money, the most exciting is another moon in the Saturn system, Titan. As the name suggests, Titan is a chunky boy, Saturn's largest moon and the second largest in the entire solar system after Jupiter's Ganymede. Titan is almost as big as Earth, and bigger than Mercury. But it isn't Titan's planet-like size that's got me all scientifically hot and bothered. It's the fact that Titan just so happens to be the only body in our solar system, aside from Earth, where stable bodies of liquid water are found on the surface. It's a world with wind, rain and distinct seasons, all of which combine to create a landscape that's surprisingly similar to that found on Earth with rivers, deltas, lakes, seas, and sand dunes. Titan's also the only moon in the solar system known to have a dense atmosphere. So far, so brilliant, but there is one small catch. There's always a catch. You see, the rivers, lakes, and seas that dot Titan's surface aren't full of water. They're flowing with liquid hydrocarbons, like methane and ethane. For that reason alone, the surface of Titan most certainly isn't a candidate for life as we know it. But it may well be a candidate for something different. At the start of this video, I said that finding life elsewhere in the solar system would pretty much guarantee the existence of untold billions of other life forms throughout the universe. And that's absolutely true, except for one small problem. If we were to find evidence of life on Mars, for example, it wouldn't necessarily mean that life had originated there independently. There's always a small chance it hitched a ride from Earth, or vice versa. 
As an example, when the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs smashed into our planet 66 million years ago, it struck with such force that it blasted billions of tons of debris clear out into space. Some of that material will have crash landed elsewhere in the solar system, potentially taking some stowaway extremophile microorganisms with it. That could have seeded other parts of the solar system with life from Earth. The concept of life travelling from planet to planet in this way is known as panspermia, which is a fancy way to say we impregnated the neighbours. And as of today, it's very much a fringe theory that's well outside the scientific mainstream for the simple reason that no real evidence backs it up. But if we were to find life elsewhere in the solar system, particularly if that life bore any similarities to life forms found here on Earth, it would certainly lend more weight to the argument. If we found life on the truly alien world of Titan, however, we could be incredibly confident that panspermia wasn't the cause. Titan is a world governed by entirely different rules, and Earth life would have no hope of surviving its methane rain and hydrocarbon seas. That's actually one of the biggest challenges we're going to face when searching for life on Titan. If we do find it, it'll be so different to anything we've ever seen on Earth, we might struggle to recognise it as life in the first place. As intriguing as the question of whether life could be possible on a moon like Titan, we're going to have to wait until at least 2034 to get any answers. That's when NASA's Dragonfly mission is due to arrive there with the express aim to hunt for life. That's one of the most frustrating things about the search for extraterrestrial life. Even here in our very own solar system, the distances involved are so great that everything takes bloody ages. Not to mention the fact that space exploration costs a pretty penny. NASA has cost the US government about $650 billion since its inception in 1958. And yet, we humans are a curious bunch. And collectively, we've decided that the possibility of learning more about the universe we find ourselves in is worth the time, effort and cost. Even as I'm speaking, probes are streaking through the solar system, heading to many of the planets and moons I've covered in this video. Will they find life when they get there? Your guess is as good as mine, but I for one can't wait to find out. Thanks for watching.